I'm David. Now I'm going to do the how to play video for Stone Age. Now this is the Rio Grande Hans and Gluck version that came out about 10 years ago because I bought this game almost right away. So there might be, if there's any variations from the Z-Man version, please let me know in the comments below. Especially if the rule book has changed at all. Uh, the reason why uh, we pick a game like Stone Age because it's part of our project to do uh, videos on the top 100 board game, board game geek family games. And this is the top, behind me are samples from the top 20. This happens to be in the top 10 as of August 2019. So uh, let's take a look at the uh, purpose of the game is to score the most points. And you'll keep track of that on this track that goes all the way around the board. Now I have, it's not quite set up yet for the game, but it is a worker placement game. And you can be placing your workers to carry out different actions here in the village or to get different resources. You can hunt for food because you're going to have to feed your workers, get uh, wood, brick, rock, and gold. And you'll use these resources in a combination of ways to construct buildings or huts, as I like to call them. And there's three different types of huts, which I'll go over in a minute. Or you're going to acquire civilization cards. There'll be four of them here. The one in this col uh, column will cost one resource of any type. This will cost two resources of the same type or mixed types. Three resources, four resources. So if you really want this card here, it will cost four resources, and they will shift down as the game progresses. Now over here, you see each player will get a board with five beginning workers and 12 food. On this track, you're going to keep track of your farming improvement. So as you learn how to farm better and have more stable food supply, so for instance, if I was at a three, I could feed three workers automatically three members of my tribe, and I would have to feed two with food. So that, hap that has to uh, occur every turn after you're done placing your workers, carrying out the actions for your workers, then you must feed your workers, and then the chieftain, which I have here, will pass to the next player. And that's the sequence of the game. Place your workers, you'll take turns doing that. To carry out the actions of all your workers on your turn, so whoever's the first player will carry out that will place their workers first, one workers first in one spot. Then the next player will place their workers in another spot and it will rotate through. Then uh, the first player will carry out the actions of all their workers and then we'll feed all of our workers simultaneously and this will pass clockwise. So you'll see right here, you have dice that you, roll, you can roll. It comes with a dice cup, I just don't have it out. There's five more workers that you can acquire. And how uh, you do that, I will start explaining now the board actions. So on my player, if I'm the first player, remember I'm going to place my workers first. I can place a worker here. And then when I'm done placing all my workers, I can carry out, I will get a plus one on my farming. If I place two workers here, I like to call it the magic hut where the stork comes for those of you who don't want to have that conversation. Uh, when I carry out my worker actions I will now have three workers and I will take it from the side here and add it to my tribe. So two workers will go into the hut and you'll come out with a third worker and then you'll place them over here. You can go here to get a tool. Uh, tools are important so I would get a at the beginning of the game, I'll get a one tool, and you'll use tools to mitigate luck when you're rolling for resources. Just so you know how it progresses, if I get another tool, it'll be a one, then I get a third tool, it'll be a one. Now if I get a fourth tool, it will flip over to a two. Fifth tool, flip over to a two. Sixth tool, flip over to a tool, a two. And then, if I were to actually get my a seventh tool, I would take a three from here and place it here. Now I have a three, it'll be a three, 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 and eventually this would flip over to a four. 
So you can actually get up to 12 points of tools to modify dice. So that is that action when you place a worker there. Now it's a, this next part is a, a rule that people will forget. When you commit to a resource spot, when anybody goes hunting, uh, you can have as many workers as you want there as in, any number of players can go there. So player one can go there, player two can go there, and if you're playing with player three or player four, they can all go there and hunt. There's no limitations. But in a two-player game, if I go to the forest to, to chop for wood, if I get there first, blue can't go there now. And you'll also notice that there's only one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So if I have seven workers, I could place all seven right here into the forest to chop down wood. But if I had eight workers, I could not place the eighth one there. So in a two-player game, the first person to go there can only go there. Same with the brick, the stone, and the gold. So maybe blue goes here, but then I can't go here in a two-player game. If it was a three-player game, two players can go to the same spot. So I could go here with blue, but the yellow player would not be able to go here. And then you still have to respect the fact that only seven total workers, no matter how many players are in the game, can go there. So you could have three blue and four red, and that would be it. Uh, but in a two-player game, only one player in each spot. In a three-player game, only two workers in each spot. In a four-player game, you could have up to three workers in each spot. In a four-player game. Uh, one other thing to keep in mind that I forgot after all these years, that when you place workers into the woods or into the, to get brick, stone, or gold, when you place them there, you must commit your workers immediately the number. You can't go, I put one here, and then later on, I'll put two, I'll put another one there. And then later on, I'll put a third one there. If you're good, when you go to a spot, when you're collecting resources, you must commit all the workers you're going to commit there. Now, why is that important? Because you take turns. So, let's say I want to stop Blue from going there. I'm going to put one there to, to hold the position to prevent blue from going there. No, if I'm going to go there, I've got to commit what I want to go there. Now, why would I want to put more than one worker there? Because now this is where the dice come into play. So if I do have three workers on wood, when it comes time to carry out the action, let's say, let's do that right now. I have five workers, and I'll simulate blue. I haven't even gone over the car jet or the construction, but I'll go over that in a moment because we're going to be dealing with placement of workers. So I'm the first player as red. I'm going to take the farming action. I don't carry it out yet. I'm placing workers. Blue goes next. Blue goes like, oh, darn, you took that from me. I'm going to do a tool action. Now, in a two-player game, that's it. The third space cannot be taken by anybody. Same with a three-player game. Let me verify that. Yeah, in a three-player game, only two spots can be taken. Now, if it was a four-player game, all three spots could be taken. So the yellow player might take this, but then the, uh, uh, the green player might not get this, get, any, get to place anything in there if they're the last player in turn. That's why it's important that the chieftain turn marker switches positions because Sometimes a fourth player and a fourth player and a four player game will not be able to place anything in the village. But anyways, back to this. So the blue went here. Now I'm going to commit to get wood. I'm placing three workers there. Blue goes, all right, well, whatever. I'm going to go for uh, brick. I have one worker left. I think I'll go hunting. Or I could go for one stone or one gold. But you'll find out in a minute why that's not necessarily a good idea. So I'm going to go hunting. Blue is going to go for more resources and go for rock. So now we've placed all of our workers. Now it comes time to carry out actions. Now it does matter what order you go in. Because I haven't gone over yet what you do with the construction or with the civilization cards. You can also place workers here. But I'll go over that in a moment. In fact, I haven't even gone over how to set that up yet. 
So let's go over what you do with the worker. So uh, I'm going to carry out this action first. I move up a farm action. Let's say I had a tool. Well, actually, I'll wait to do that with the blue in a minute here. I can either do the, the uh, hunting action or the woods action. I'm going to do the hunting action first. So on your little board here, it shows a number. What you're going to divide the dice that you, dice that you rolled per worker by that number. So I used one worker for the hunting action. Because I use one worker, I get one die. Now I will roll that die, and hopefully I get at least a two. I, had a, I got a four. Two and the four is two. So now I will get two food. So that worker was successfully able to get two food on that hunting action. So I added to my board, I got two food. These workers have already been used. Now if you notice, remember on the board here, I have three gathering wood. I go here to gather wood. I have three workers. I roll a die for each worker, so that's three dice. Hopefully, I, get at I will at least get a three. If I roll all ones, I will get at least one wood. But hopefully I roll better and divide by three. So I have an 11. Too bad I didn't get a 12. So 11 divided by three, rounding down, is nine. Three into nine is three wood, so I get three wood. So I take it off the supply here and add it to my board. So that will be the, uh, the end of my turn. I just carried out all my worker actions. Now blue will carry out their actions because blue is next in turn order. Uh, at the end of this round, because I have one farming, I feed one worker automatically. I have four that needs to eat food. So I have plenty of food here. I have 14. Now let's say at some point I have no food and I can't feed them all. Let's say I only had two food. Well, I feed two of them. Now I have to give up two resources of any type. And if I had gold, that'd be very expensive because gold's hard to get. You divide by six when you roll the dice. So I'd have to lose resources. But let's say I had no, I didn't have enough food and only had one resource. So I would feed that guy with a resource and then I would go down minus one point on the track. So I'd actually go backwards one if I couldn't feed him. But at the beginning of the game, that's going to happen because you start out with 12 food. So that was the red player's actions. Let's look at blue. Here's the blue board. I already I used different uh, people for that. So blue is going to take the tool first. Now this is where it matters what order you go in because the tool, a one tool, will be able to add it to the dice. So remember when I rolled an 11 for my wood action. Well, if I would have had a one tool, I could have made it a 12 and got an additional wood out of it. So this is where it matters that you, what order you carry out actions in, because blue is going to want to use, get that one tool first before blue rolls for resources. Now it's harder to get rock than it is brick, because rock, or stone I should say, stone needs to divide by five. So I'm uh, going to take off this two people there. And we'll roll two dice to try to get stone. Hopefully I get at least a five to get one stone. If I get lucky, I'll roll a ten. Wow, I rolled really bad. I rolled a three. Even adding one in, we'll get a four. I don't get any stone. So that's where you can get unlucky. If I would have had three people there, it probably would have been okay, but I didn't roll well. So... Remember, the average on two dice is about, a, is about a six or a seven. Six, seven, or eight or is what you're more likely to get. So I just rolled badly. All right, so let's do the, uh, the brick now. Right here. Blue takes two people off the brick. Rolls for the brick. Now we're dividing by four. Okay, eight. I am going to get two brick. Don't even need to use the tool. Making a nine won't make a difference. So I take off two brick. And now blue has two brick. And now blue has to pay for to feed his people or her people. So if you look at the board here, blue has not taken a farming action yet. So their farming action is at zero. So to feed all five people, 
would be 5. Now, if blue instead had done the hut action, instead of going for the stone, they would have, uh, she would have 6 people, and so therefore would have to pay 6 total for all 6. So now what I've, what I've gone over is how you place workers, carrying out the actions of your workers, and then feeding your people. And you keep on doing this until the game ends. Now, how does the game come to an end? Well, remember, I haven't explained yet construction cards and civilization cards. The game will end when the civilization deck is depleted. Uh, if you can't fill the civilization deck, is at the end of every round, you'll refill the cards. If you can't fill it, the game ends. I think it's immediately. Let me look that up again. Yeah, it ends immediately if you can't fill them up. The construction deck, you're going to have, if you notice here, there are spaces for four construction decks. There are 28 of these. So in a two-player game, you're only going to have two piles of seven. In a three-player game, three piles of seven. In a four-player game, four piles of seven. You will always, no matter if it's a two-player game, three-player game, or four-player game, have four cards here. So let me... Uh, one you can, thing you can do as well with your workers before I go over these cards. You can place your worker on that, meaning that you're going to con convert two wood and a gold to get 12 victory points. So you place a worker there. You could also get civilization cards by putting a worker here, and you would have to pay the resource card a resource cost above that card. So before I model that, let me go over what these different cards mean. First, the construction. So there's th three general types. The easiest ones to understand for buildings are these. It tells you exactly what you need. So to get 12 victory points, you have to have at least two wood and a gold so I, if I have gotten that on previous turns, or even the same turn, because remember, turn order matters here, I can get that two wood and gold on the turn that I place my worker on that construction uh, card and try to get it that turn. But if I already had the wood and gold, I don't have to place workers. So let's say, for instance, I am going for this card. Okay, I'm going for this card. It's right here in the stack. Pretend there's a stack here. I place my worker here. Let's say I'm going to go for wood here and two here. So if I'm really pushing the luck here, I'm going to roll for wood. Oh, I got lucky. I got two wood. Gold here, I'm going to roll. I can't believe how lucky I got. I got two gold. I rolled two sixes. So I definitely had enough to pay for that card. But you see how I was pushing my luck there. It's not normally how it's going to go. Hopefully I already have the wood and gold, at least some of it, or have enough workers to even the odds where I can place more workers in the wood and gold spot. But remember, a player who's watching might take that spot in a two-player game and I can't get wood this round. So if I'm not careful, if I try to go for that, that hut, that construction card, and the observant other player goes, oh, he needs wood, and blue goes, takes that spot, and I'm going, well, gee whiz, I just wasted my action. I can't even go for that if I didn't have any wood in blue took that away from me. So that's where watching what a player is going for, looking what's on their board, because resources are, you know what resources other players have. If you're paying attention and they're pushing their luck, like I was just doing there, and I'm going for that, that hut, and I haven't claimed the wood yet to try to place workers there to get it, the wood can jump on it, and I mean, sorry, the blue could jump on it and prevent me from getting wood that round, and then I would have wasted a worker for that action. So, back to the construction cards. These are the easiest ones to understand. You notice that it's actually equal to its value. So, 4 plus 5 plus 6. Is it actually equal? Yes, that's 15. 3 plus 4 plus 5 is 12. So, immediately when you pay for a card like that, you'll move it up. So if I did get a 12, I'd, I'd go immediately to 12 right here. 
on the edge. So again, these are all just different, more of the same. Now let me explain how these work. This can be a little confusing until you get used to it. The reason why it's a question mark is it depends on what resources you're going to use. So this means that you use one resource type of any type. It could, you could use gold, stone, brick, or wood, but you need four of that. So ideally, you would want to have four gold to meet that condition because four times six would give me 24 points. The least amount would be four wood, four times three is 12. So the range that you can get for this is 12, 16, 20, or 24, because you could use four stone, or four clay, I'm sorry, four brick, or four wood. This one means that you have to do four different resources, four different, basically every type of resource, and have four of them. So I'd need a wood, a stone, a brick, and a gold to complete that one. Here, I need two different resources and five of them. So I could do three, ideally, four gold and one stone would be the, the best combination because that would give me 24, 29 points. Or I could do four, for instance, I might have the least, the least would be four wood and one brick because that would be 12 plus 16. So you can see that particular card, the range of possible victory points would be 29, 16, the 29. And it's more of the same. Two different resources, four, but you have to have four total. Three different resources, five total. Four different resources, five total. One resource, five of them, so it could be five gold, five wood. Three different resources, four total. The other variety, one to seven means, there's three of these in the game, I can just take this card and do one wood and get three points. Or, if I really got lucky, do seven gold times six could be worth 42 points. Or maybe I only have three gold and I just want to claim it and get uh, 18 points. So, how do you set that up? Well, I take all the stacks, I mix them up, okay? So I mix them up. In a two-player game, I would create two stacks of seven, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I flip over the first one in each one. And so now I have two building stacks, construction stacks that I can go for. So uh, remember when I was placing workers around the board, not only can I place them, into, let me, I knocked down the stack here. Not only can I place them in the village to get resources or go hunting, but I can also try to claim a, a, a hut, a construction card. So that's, I could either do this one or this one. In fact, if I really had enough resources, I can try to claim both. If I have enough workers and resources and try to prevent blue from going for one of them in the same turn. All right, so that's the construction cards. Now the, other, the last thing to go over is that you can place workers on the civilization cards. Now, they're not going to be stacked up like this. You're going to have a deck. But if I do place a worker here, it will cost me one resource of any type to get this card. If I place it here, two resources of any type, as I've mentioned already. It can be two wood or a combination of like a wood and a stone or two gold. That would be really expensive, though. Here, it cost me three resources of any type or combination and four for this. So let's go over how these cards work. This card, the reason why I separated this stack is because the top half, you're going to get the benefit right away when you pay your resources to get it. So two wood, I'm sorry, two food, four food. For the number of players, whoever claims this card will roll the number of dice. So let's say in a three-player game, you'll roll three dice. The player who pick the card and pay the resources for it, will decide what number they want to do first. So say they want to improve their farming, they would take that one, or maybe they really want a gold really bad, they take that one. 
then the next player in order would take the next number. So I would usually go for farming. The first player might take that. The second player might take the four and get a gold. And the last player in a three-player game would take the wood. Again, same card. Three victory points if you take this card. Now you notice the bottom half is carried out at the end of the game. And they're multipliers. So if I had this card at the end of the game, it's a times three construction. And I had three huts constructed. At the end of the game, I would have three times three. I would have nine victory points. In fact, if I had two of these cards, it could be five times three, it'd be 15 points. <coughs> Excuse me. So that's that multiplier. Let's take a look at the next multiplier. These are tools. So this multiplies the number of tools that you have. So if I had one, one, and a two, I have four points of tools. Oh, by the way, I should point this out. Say I roll this. I don't have to use all my tools. I can modify it with this one. I would turn it sideways and then have a, a 12, a 14. Maybe I was hunting and I, can, I want seven uh, food. So you just turn it in the next, on the next round, you would turn it back. All right, so this multiplies your tools. So if I had two of these times four of four, it would be 16 points. So you've already seen this card and this card. Uh, well now what's up here? This gives you a temporary tool that you can use once. So I take a four, you don't put it here, you put it off to the side. And so one time I can use a four tool. Uh, when I want to affect the outcomes of a resource roll. So that's the uh, the civilization cards that affect tools. Here are the next set of cards that affect people. So if I had five, eight people, and I had two of these cards, I'd have at the end of the game three times eight, 24 points. Now, these, now, here's some different cards. I acquire this card, I get a brick. Just one time. Here, I get a gold one time. Here, I would get as many wood as my roll, and I could use my tools to affect it, so I'd at least get three uh, wood. If I modify it, make it a 12, I'd get four wood. Same here with stone, and I get one stone here. So that's that deck. This deck, again, uh, depending on my farming improvement, if I have a three, let's say I went up to seven farming right here, and I have a three multiplier, it'd be three times seven, possible 21 points at the end of the game. Now, before I forget this, when you acquire these civilization cards, you get to look at them. The players will have to remember what you took and you put it face down. Uh, people have to remember what you're going for. Because one way you interact in this game is, if I know that the opponents is going for multipliers for people, I may want to take those people cards for them so that they don't increase their multiplier. So uh, let's see, is there any different cards? Oh yes, this card right here will give you plus one farming. So if I was at a seven, it would go to an eight. Now the last type of cards you can get are basically technology. And there are, if you see here, eight different types. So it's exponential. If I had weaving, uh, time, and writing, if I had to set a three, three times three is nine, I get nine points at the end of the game. Now let's say I had another weaving and another uh, writing. You do not start a second set. It's nine, and these would only be worth one each, 10, 11. I only have 11 points. It would not be nine plus four. It would not be 13. Again, it would be nine plus one plus one, which would be 11. Now, again, the max you can get is eight of these, and you can see the different types here. Where's the other one? And those are all eight types. If you were to have all eight of these, that would be 64 points. Now, again, just to show the setup here, Again, I'm doing set up in a different order here because I need to explain the cards before I show you how it's set up. So you take the whole stack of civilization cards. I would 
mix them up, even though I showed you the, uh, the four, or is it five different types, you combine it all in one deck. And then you have four different cards. They're all randomized. The deck would go over here. So now, again, if I were to do the first turn again of five and five in a two-player game, So this is, I will do uh, another run through of a turn here. So red doesn't have any resources yet, so it's not going to go in for any buildings, but definitely wants this. Well, it's going to take the farming action. Blue is going to go, hmm, I can't get a farming action, but I can get it here on this card. Red goes, oh, well, you went for that card. I'm going to get tools. So now blue in a two-player game can't even go for the HUD action to get an extra person. So blue goes, well, I need to be able to pay for this card. And so blue is going to get wood because that's the cheapest resource. Red goes, oh, darn, I really wanted to get wood. I'm going to go to get a plus one tool here. I'm going to go for this card. Blue goes, well, I'm going to be a jerk and prevent you from getting uh, brick, which is cheap. And, now, and so now as a red player, I'm going, well, you know what? That really sucks. I really wanted... Now I'm going to have to get two stone. I have to get two fives. So I might not be able to get this now. So red, being the first player, gets to carry out the actions in the uh, turn order. I definitely want my tool first before I roll for my stone. So I take the, my worker in stone, uh, sorry, in tool, and put it here. So I have a uh, one tool. I might as well complete my farm action, go up one. I have now two stone. Now this is where I blue uh, messed me up. But also, I was pushing the odds here. This is not a good action to do in the very beginning of the game. Uh, so I go, I put my two workers there. I'm rolling for two stones, so I need to get fives. And I need two stones to pay for that card. And I got it. However, let's say it was a 9. I could use a tool to make it to a 10 and get the 2 stone. So even though I got the 2 stone, I don't have to carry out that action to get the card. I'm not, I can change my mind. Because stone is pretty expensive. But I really want that plus 1 tool. And I want the card for the in-game scoring. So I will pay... Two stone, even though it was very expensive compared to wood. So now I get this card. I, I add it. I get a plus one tool. Not a bad first turn. I turn it over. I know what it is. Now my opponent will have to remember that I got one of the symbols towards end game scoring. Now blue will go. Blue goes, oh, well, that's a bummer. Uh, I definitely need to get wood first. So they're going to take the three guys off, roll the three dice, got nine, twelve, got lucky, rolled four wood. You need to pay one wood for this, so it adds three wood to their board. The workers are there. Now I could roll for this brick first and pay with brick, but I'm going to, you know, like I said, pay for wood. So blue gets this card. Going to add one to farming. So I go to the track here. Blue is tied with red for each have one farming. Uh, now blue needs to roll for that brick and did not roll well. Rolled a one and needed at least to get a four. So blue does not get any, any brick for that turn. So blue with one farming pays for one worker, has to pay for the other four, we'll use five food, gets one in change. Uh, at the beginning of the game, everybody would have 12, even though I didn't show it there for the blue. Uh, red also has one farming, needs to pay four, pays for it. Now we refresh the board, the cards slide down, so now it's cheaper to get these cards. 
two new cards pop up. And these buildings stay here. Nobody one form this turn, but they still stay here. And then now the first player icon passes to blue, and then blue would carry out. Now that would continue until, like I said, the one building stack is depleted. Let's say blue takes that one, it's depleted. You still finish the current turn, but if for some reason three cards were, there's only two cards left in the deck, this slides down. And you find out, oops, can't fill out the, uh, the display here. The game would end immediately. So then, what you go to now, end game scoring, you're going to, you've already been keeping track during the game of your huts. Every time you get a hut, you're going around the board. Uh, anytime you get a, a, a civilization card with this symbol, you would have marked down right away. And as I've mentioned in the uh, explanation of the cards, now you're going to flip over your cards and do your multipliers for food and for tools and for uh, people. I don't know where, uh, people and for construction for your huts. Where's it? Uh, hut one, right here. So you do your multipliers and you'll keep track around the board. You'll take turns, and then you'll look at your sets of of technology and move up around the board too. So then whoever has the most points wins. So very simple uh, worker placement game. There's a little bit of rules. Oh, one rule that I wasn't playing with for a while until I read it on BGG because in the Rio Grande rules, it might be highlighted better in the Z-Man rules, but you'll see here in this version, there's a line here about scoring. You see that it goes from final scoring, gives you talks about how you do it. And then right here, hidden right here, it says, at least in my opinion, it's hidden, each resource, not food, that a player has on his player board scores one point. So whether it's wood or gold, so right here, let's say I had this remaining because I couldn't spend it to buy, uh, to construct a uh, building, that would be worth four victory points. So most victory points wins. Is there any tying rules? Hmm. If players are tired, tied for most points, the player among them with the highest total of food production, tools, and people is the winner. So you would total that up. It doesn't say if someone's tied for all three of those, if they share the victory or not. I assume it's shared victory. So that is how to play Stone Age. Uh, please take a look at our playthrough video and our review. And if we get 100 likes on either video, we will do the uh, a video series on the expansion. And the expansion uh, adds a fifth player and adds uh, jewelry to the game that you can use to buy things as well. So thank you for watching this video. Please remember to like and subscribe. I'm David.